We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Good day, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? You know, um, I'm a little bit. I think I'm a little. I think I'm. A, I think I'm going to be sunburnt, and my hamstrings are killing me. I did like a lot of hamstring stuff at the gym, uh, and then then I did yard work all weekend. And I tell you what, um, when I get out of this chair, when we're done here, it's it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> and have your your two dogs drag you around. Uh, no, LG's too old for that. Apollo's going to have to do all the dragging. <laughs> I'm going to have to treat him like a quarter horse. There you go. All right. What do we got today, Jared? Ah, uh, big. Sorry, that, the beer. That. The beer really exploded when I opened it. <laughs> all right. That that's sorry. I just splashed beer all over myself. Um big recruiting weekend. Um we're going to use that as an excuse to do the June mock. Also, it's like it's June 19th. We're running out of days to release the June mock. So here we are and all by the way, happy Juneteenth to everybody. Um especially those of you who got uh today off which is tomorrow for us, but whatever. So, um, and of course, especially, especially to everyone who got the day off is exactly not how I should have said that. <laughs> um, happy Juneteenth to all of our uh, black African-American listeners. Uh, and also secondarily, happy Juneteenth, everyone who got today off. Here's to working in the banking industry, Kyle. Hmm, here, here. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Big month so far here we had a lot of a lot of big names that came to Ohio State to um to do um to visit here and yeah, kind of like what Jared said here, I um, think it'd be a good time to revisit the mock draft here. Um, mock class. At, thank you, the mock class. <laughs> I do it too. Um we can um Pencil in people who've already uh, made their announcement that they are coming to Ohio State, like Jalen, like um, Jalen McLean. Yeah, Jalen McLean, uh, most recent commit. At least at the time we're recording this, there, 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 there seems to be some, some buzz, uh, a lot of Twitter buzz at the moment. So I'm at least a little bit concerned that someone's going to commit. Um, somewhere in between us recording this and releasing it. Um, I mean, when I say concerned, I mean purely as a podcaster, as a Buckeye fan, you, you know, always take it, of course. But the podcast brain in me is always just like. But yeah, uh, no one's committed uh, on, on, on June 18th that we know of yet. And we're recording this at like 830 at night, so you know, give us some grace if that happens. But yeah, let's let's run down through the mock class. I am estimating this class at about 26 to 28 players. That's a for historically for Ohio State. Big. That's big. That's a, that's a big class. Yeah. Well, two reasons. One, they didn't get the numbers on last year's class that they wanted as far as just bodies. So that'll leave them a couple extra spots. And we also have like a historically great junior class that's going to be playing football at Ohio State this year. You're going to have a ton, an absolute metric shit ton of early draft enrollees. Mm -hmm. So um, they're going to, they have room here. They definitely have room here. Um, so let's 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 start at the quarterback, Air Noland. Air Noland uh, had a really good Elite Eleven performance. By anyone's estimation, uh, he was in the top three quarterbacks. There appeared to be three quarterbacks above the rest. And hey, look at that! Committed to Ohio State, Alabama, and Georgia. The rich keep on getting richer. Um, that that's that's how that works in college football. At running back. I have two to three now. I should probably have Sam William Dixon maybe listed as an athlete here because I think he'll be sort of rolling as like a flex 
player, sometimes wide receiver, sometimes running back, sort of in that in that area. Um, mm -hmm. So I probably maybe should have him listed as an athlete, but I still have him listed as a running back for now. And then James Peoples and Jordan Lyle uh, all committed to the class already. Um, so return of H back, sort of. Um, you, you could sort of look at what Xavier Johnson did for Ohio State last year as a comp. Um, I think you'll I think you'll see Evan Pryor do that role this year. I don't know if it's exactly like Urban's H back, but a flex player nonetheless. Yeah, it's it's definitely definitely don't see like three running backs. I mean, obviously it's done that years past, but it's it's not a typical thing the house state tends to do. No. And you know, I've I've at least read a couple things that suggest that maybe Sam William Dixon is not um super like i don't know if that's the role he has envisioned for himself so if ohio state and sam william dixon don't see eye to eye on that um he could leave the class um so that that's also a possibility to keep an eye on yeah i went back the 10 past 10 years here jared and most of most ohio state had was two Mo most years it's one one running back they they get now some some do roll over to be a running back eventually but no it's it's one historically usually right wide receiver um currently in the class jj smith and mylon graham and i'm just gonna go ahead and say this smith isn't going anywhere everyone chill the fuck out please yeah please leave the kid alone on twitter you're, if anything is going to cause him to leave, it'll be Ohio State fans. Yeah. What was it? Wasn't it his dad is like pretty much telling people like people chill. He's leave, leave him alone. What was it? Was, was it his dad that did that? There was I don't the remember. There was one of the recruits dad that was like, yeah, just everybody just stop. <laughs> yeah, it's. People will get pissy because he's not. taking visits and it's just like, hey, he's a he's a kid on summer break going into his senior year of high school and people want to pay him money to go hang out on a college campus for a weekend. Not pay him money, but pay his way. Yeah, they want to like, um, give him a, vac a free vacation to a college campus. You would take it if you were him. Yeah. What was it? There was there was some. um uh georgia insider that met up with jj recently and asked him said are you are you locked in are you are you like locked in or are you still gonna uh go around and do other kind of visits and and, and then jeremiah's like no i'm 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 locked in after after my most recent visit to columbus i'm i am locked in and by the way kept, no sorry go ahead finish your thought yeah, and he kept going on and like, oh, what about any kind of visits in the in the fall? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take some visits uh, back to Ohio State. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, you might hear us just like interchangeably refer to him as either JJ or Jeremiah. I I, I hear see him referred to both a lot. Yeah. Uh, Mylon Graham again, also in the class currently. Um, I look maybe for two additional wide receivers to be added to this class. Jeremiah McClellan uh, and Elijah Moore, who I currently have in the class. Um, I think this is the first class we've done. Uh, as the Sloopcast, our first mock class we've done to not include jo include Josiah Trader, who's like that sort of wide receiver, sort of cornerback, uh, just stud athlete out of Florida. Um, I feel like that's trending in, in other directions at the moment, but we'll see. All right, Kyle, tight ends. What do you got Is this on the tight year ends? of the tight end? No, it's never the year of the tight end. It's always the year <laughs> of the tight end. So, yes, right. but no. 
So we got a uh, Max LeBlanc in here, and yep, yep. And yeah, I I really do think Ohio State will get a second. Yeah, every year. Yes, every year. Um, I really I really think that Ohio State will get two tight ends this year, and the other one's going to be a uh, Demarion Witten. Yeah. Yeah, I think there was a crystal ball sending him somewhere else recently. I don't care. I still have Demarion Witten um, coming to Ohio State. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's, not... it's that it's that Glenville pipeline here. Yeah, I think. Uh, was it like a Kentucky beat writer? Yep. Beat writer yeah, giving recently. him a crystal ball yeah. to Kentucky. I don't care. He's coming. I, I I'll believe he's not coming to Columbus if he's n- not. If he goes somewhere else on National Signing Day, that's the only way I'm believing. Yeah, that. I mean, when you got when you got both um, Bill and uh, Steve giving their crystal balls, I mean, B- Bill's has been out there for a, a while, but but when you got both of those and they still are sticking yeah. to their confidence there, I, I'll, I'll bet my bet my money on on them than than a Zach, Kentucky beat writer, Zach. Um, uh, no, <laughs> Ryan, I, I, I love Ryan day. Ryan day is doing a lot of great things, but that's miss that's a, uh, that's Mr. Ginn senior doing all that work up there in Cleveland. Yes. All right. Offensive line, uh, offensive line. I still say is five guys. Um, I still think they need a true offensive tackle in this class. Um, it is currently, uh, Devonte Armstrong and Deontay Armstrong. Uh, Deontay is considered an offensive tackle. Devonte is considered a tackle guard, guard tackle. Um, then you have uh, Mark Nave and Ian Moore, who are uh, two, I would say, pretty set guards. So you have one true offensive tackle in this class right now. You have Devonte, who might be an offensive tackle. They need another offensive tackle in this class and they know it. Um, I am still going with Gerby Lambert in this, in this spot to be the fifth offensive tackle. Um, there has been some buzz about a really high, highly, super highly ranked player, uh, Brandon Baker. Um, Brandon Baker would be uh, an amazing get for Ohio State. Um, I, truly, I, I mean, I it's just here. Here's my issue with Brandon Baker, and this is going to come up later. Um, c- with a couple other players. Brandon Baker plays for Mater Day. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel like I feel like we always get our hopes up. I feel like we always get our hopes up on on one of those monarch kids, um, and and then it and then it doesn't happen. That's that's just how I feel about. And and by the way, I I, I have a monarch later in this class. So I'm just I I'll, I'll Zabin Brown, the cornerback. Uh, I I have him in this class as well, or I mean I have him in this class. He's a Mater Day kid. He's a monarch. Um, but I'm just always a little hesitant because I just feel like, I feel like Ohio State's just like always making top threes and top fives for those kids, but then they, they just don't come. Um, and until Ohio State sort of breaks that tendency, I'm going to keep thinking that's the tendency. But, but, but he came out, I think it was today, was it? Yeah, today he came out with his uh, uh, top ten teams. And okay, okay, cool. Don't don't even don't even Kyle. I, I don't I don't care. I know. I'm just just. I know you don't like that. I was just trying to wild wild you up there. Okay, okay, okay. But like a a top ten in June is meaningless. A top ten in June is meaningless. A top ten in June is like doing a top 20 in January. That's it. That's, that's all I got to say about that. And again, I hope I'm not even, cause I, 
I was about to say, I hope I'm wrong. I'm not even saying Brandon Baker isn't coming. I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying right now, if I have to pick between the likelihood of two players coming, which is, that's what I'm doing here. That's, that's the, that's the idea of the mock class. I'm going with Gerby Lambert. If I have to choose based off of likelihood, who ends up in the Ohio State class, which again is what I'm doing here. Gerby Lambert, I think, is the more likely of the two. Is Ginn Sr. still there? He had to leave for a few years, but he is back. Rutgers is really helping with these Northeast guys. M M Mater Day is in Southern California. Yeah. But I All think right. I'm, I also think I've been told I've been told I pronounced that wrong, but whatever. That's a, just that's just Loopcast tradition at this point. Um, pronouncing right. names wrong is what we do here. All right. So, it Kyle, is. the offense, I think, is somewhat set. I mean, two wide receivers, a tight end, an offensive tackle. I think. I think those because like even if Sam William Dixon doesn't come to Ohio State. I hope he does. Just just so we're clear, I hope he does. I want him on. I want him in the class. But even if he doesn't, I don't think Ohio State turns around and replaces him with another running back. So. I, I, I think we're like only four spots left on the entire offense defense. We have a little bit more room to play with here. Where do you want to start on the defense, Kyle? Well, let's just let's just stick with the slobs here, just on the oh, you met side. Gerby in in uh, in in response to the Northeast guys. Gotcha. And just let's just stick with the the linemen here and on the defensive side. Yeah, I I continue. I I we've been doing the, these mock classes every month for a few months now. Um, I think I've said it in the other class. Uh, the other mock classes, and I'm going to say it again now. I'm still really struggling to see the vision. Um, it, I, I'm I'm the I, the position I am struggling the most with is defensive tackle, as far as trying to make a coherent prediction. I that's just where I am. I I just don't have a good feel. I can t I I feel like my feel is maybe better, but I still feel like. If you want to take me to task on any of these predictions, you could probably start with defensive tackle. I because I I'm just not I don't I don't have a clear view there at this time. Um, right now I have Jaden Jackson and Nigel Smith. Th those those are the guys I have right now for defensive tackle. Um, again, my confidence there isn't great. I just like I said, I just don't have like a real clear vision um, as far as who those I think it'll be two guys at defensive tackle in this class. And I just don't like, I don't have a clear vision of who they are. I think you can maybe keep an eye on like uh, DK Kirk um, as, as maybe another guy, but uh, I'm going to go with Jaden Jackson and Nigel Smith for now. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely that. I think, I think the defensive line is one that, Definitely got to keep an eye out for like who's who's trending up that will might be coming to Ohio State. And it's just kind of like what Jared said. It's hard to really, really hard to make um, to figure that out right now. And so I think I think Ohio I State would, has a I think Ohio State has a lot of work ahead of them to 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 strengthen some relationships with uh, some of these players. Now, the defensive end, however, I think we've gotten especially this week well, or maybe in the last two weeks. I feel like yeah, we have a very previous, clear vision for defensive end at this time. Yeah. The previous weekend, um, uh, Marquise Lightfoot came on to, came on to campus here. So I think, I think that, I think that might be, I think that might be a good, um, good thing for Ohio state. I think there's, um, some good, good vibes after his visit. So I think, I think Marquise is, if, you're feeling pretty good if you're a Ohio State fan or the Ohio State uh, coaching staff right now. Um, but what about what about the other ones though, Jared? What what else Edric, do you do you see? Edric Houston. Uh, Edric Houston just this past weekend visited Ohio State. 
Um, and the crystal balls have been rolling in the interviews that reading from, from the recruiting services and the recruiting sites. Um, it, it, it feels incredibly positive. Um, he has a decision date set for about two months out. So I, I don't know. I don't know how, you, you know what we always imminent. say, Jared, I don't, well, I, I, okay. I mean, say it, but I'm gonna tell you why it doesn't apply in this case. If he's already made his decision date, he's already made up his mind. Yeah. But not, not when you said it like, cause it's two months out from now. He set that, uh, he set that date a while ago. So let's just say three months out. If you, I don't think that applies if you set, if you set your announcement date, like three months out. I think that's, I think him saying 822 is just him saying, I want to focus on my senior year of high school football. I don't want all this hanging over my head. I want to make a decision before I start football. Mm hmm. I, that but, that but to me Jared, is what 822 three months out means is the decision date. But Jared, in the last week here, as I mentioned with a previous um, uh, recruit here, feel pretty good when you got crystal balls from Bill and Steve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bill you, got that, you got that here with Steve. Edric Houston. Yeah, yeah. And, and those are very recent. Um, again, like Lightfoot in Houston, I feel pretty good i feel very good about at this point is 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 not confident as i feel about my two defensive tackle selections i feel <laughs> very confident about my two defensive end selections that you know i i think you know whether it be dylan stewart or darian mayo or uh i know a uh, booker pritchett there's like is he a linebacker is he defensive end um I feel like there was a bunch of good situations with defensive end, but we didn't necessarily have a clear view of specifically which two guys it was going to be. Um, and even then, I well, even now, I think I've seen some people. I think there's some conversation about whether or not Edric Houston is a. Is he a big? Is he a big defensive end? Or is he a fast defensive tackle? Um, I think there's maybe some disagreement on exactly where he ends up. Um, but Ohio State likes to have like a big anchor defensive end on one side. Um, so I, I think that probably works regardless, regardless of any of that. Um, if if we are counting Edric Houston as a defensive end, um, the defensive end vision became very clear these past you know, these past two weeks. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to the linebackers. I feel that Ohio State um, last year and um, and then I think this year, um, definitely making good strides forward with the linebacker because it, especially the past, I don't know, about 10 years, it's linebackers has definitely been one of the weakest points for Ohio State here. 10 is way too big of a number, but. Ten is dude. Two thousand thirteen into fourteen. Yeah. Like okay, okay. The last last five 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 six years. Then okay. How about that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Ever yeah, ever it's, it's ever definitely, ever definitely since Urban hired his, his 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 best man to to run the linebacker room, it's it's not been fantastic. Except yeah. for last year, I I, I mean, I, I thought the linebackers played exceptionally well last season. Um, but the recruiting still, you know, is is what it was. So already, yeah, so, sorry, no, you go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, Ohio State already has two um, linebackers right now. Um, they got uh, Garrett Stover. Everybody, everybody knows Stover, <laughs> and they also have um, Peyton Pierce. Peyton Pierce is the kid out of. Um, Texas as well too, so you got two two kids in the top two hundred uh, coming to Ohio State. Yeah, I do expect a third linebacker to be taken here. For the record, um, especially since I think Garrett Stover is um, much like his cousin, kind of an athlete. <laughs> you know, 
I, I think linebacker is where we're placing him right now, but could he end up on the defensive line? Could he be a tight end? Like he's a lot like his cousin in that way. Um, so I think you really want to bring in a third guy. Um, Kingston. Uh, okay. Kyle. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Viamu Aza. Vil, Villa. I, you know, Kyle, I feel like, I feel like we nailed this one when we did the May mock. And in Villamu the time. Asa. Villamu Asa. I think that's what I said. You just said it more confidently than I did, if we're being honest. That, that's, that's what it is, Jared. <laughs> Kingston Villamu Asa. Um I I I had him in I had him in the last mock. Uh nothing has changed since then, in my opinion. Whether it be someone else rising on Ohio State's board or someone else rising on Kingston's board. Um nothing here's really shaken me yet. So I, I think that you know, a, a lot of the times in recruiting, people take no news as bad news. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he's he's definitely been busy this month here. Um, he's already gone to USC mm-hmm. uh, just this last weekend. He was at Notre Dame. And next weekend, another big weekend here. I'll mention at the end here once we go through all the positions here. Next weekend's another big weekend for Ohio State. Has it has a lot of big time um, recruits coming into onto campus. Yeah, absolutely. Um and like he's not, I want to be very clear. I, I'm I'm not even trying to say like he's a lock or anything. I think Notre Dame is in play, and I think USC is in play. Um, I'm not I'm not trying to be like, you know, he's an Ohio State lock. Everybody, I'm not I'm not even trying to say that. Um, but I, I I do think that, especially from Ohio State's perspective, I think he is the most likely linebacker to end up in this class, aside from the two guys are already in this class um again booker pritchett who uh, you know once again some people see as more of an edge rusher uh more of a defensive end in in the ohio state system so i'm not 100 percent sure where ohio state sees him um quinn birdsong is another name out there to keep an eye on um but i'm gonna go with kingston all right and um Kind of like the defensive tackles here, Jared. Uh, no, no commit verbal commits yet for our defensive backs, our cornerbacks. Yeah, right the now. cornerbacks. Now, I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of good buzz with uh, with Bryce West. We got that in my mind. That's a, that's a must get in state recruit here. Um, but we've also mentioned Aaron Scott uh, previously. Um, I don't know about Lockhart. Lockhart, do we have Lockhart on the in, in the, the last, last mock? Yeah, yeah, we did. Okay. Um, yeah, and the fourth guy is Zabin Brown, who we mentioned earlier, uh, is a is a Mater Day kid who I have included in the mock, uh, despite what I was saying earlier uh, about Brandon Baker. Um, I think there's a first off, there's a lot of buzz around specifically. Bryce Scott, excuse me, Bryce West and Aaron Scott about Michigan still. Um, And while I I'm not saying it's over by any means, I'm not saying they are dead set going to Ohio State. I am going to continue to believe they're going to Ohio State. Um, Again, Michigan's in the in in the picture here for both of them, um, one of them in particular, but. I'm going to stick with Ohio State at this time. Um, that's just those are two must get in state kids. And again, I know like fresh off of a visit for uh I think both of them very recently from Michigan, there is competition there. And I, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna get on the soapbox here and be like ignore all the buzz and ignore all the this and ignore all the that they're definitely coming to Ohio state. I'm not saying that. I think there's a very legitimate reason um, for concern. Happy father's day. Dad only Kyle's the dad here. (laughs) Um, 
but the uh, uh yeah again like i i'm still have i'm still projecting both of the the other one was for austin he's not here today um i'm still leaning both of them to ohio state uh i would say bryce west especially leaning them towards ohio state at this time um zaven brown uh, i think is probably the the least confident pick on this list for me um i i think ohio state they just ohio state just had visits from both um corian gibson and kobe black and both of those guys feel like pipe dreams at this point those are both uh incredibly highly ranked guys um who had great visits to ohio state this past weekend and like, so there's buzz, right? Like in, in the immediate aftermath of the visit, they go and they do the interviews and they're high school kids. So they tell everyone in the interviews that the, 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 the trip was perfect and the visit was perfect and everything was great and everything was perfect. So then all this buzz starts happening. And like you, you always give Ohio state a better chance. Obviously you give any give any major program a better chance if you actually get the kid to come on campus right like that that's the yep. first that's the first thing you got to get them on campus you don't get them on campus and they go to someone else's campus you don't got a chance in hell but ohio state is especially good once you get the kids on campus they got kobe black and they got corian gibson on campus um and again they both feel like pipe dreams at this point um you you see the recruiting numbers and you really, really hope it's going to happen. But um, I'm not going to put them in a four cornerback mock at this point based off of really, really hope. Yeah, um, I just I still at this time feel like West, Scott, Lockhart and Brown are more likely. And I will also say that that's. That order that I mentioned them in is probably, although by accident, because that's the order they're in in my notes. But by accident, that's probably also my confidence listing as far as their likelihood of ending up in the mock or ending well, up in of, the actual class, that is. It's kind of funny. Those, those top three there, Wes, Scott, Lockhart, uh, those three will be on campus this next weekend. Right. So, I mean, again, <laughs> there's all of this concern around West and Scott because, you know, there's they, they go to Michigan and they have perfect visits and yada, yada, yada. It's sort of like how there's all of this buzz right now around Ohio State and Corian Gibson, Ohio State and Kobe Black, Ohio State and KJ Bolden. All of the and Ohio State and, and Brandon Baker. We're still like <laughs> I say, take them all. Uh, I mean, you'd love to. You'd love to gangland. So like we're, we're in this like post visit buzz. And the post the post visit buzz is fantastic to get your hopes up to get, you know, Brandon Baker and Kobe Black and all these guys. Right. And but it's, I feel like it, it also. Also use that to temper the buzz around Bryce West and Aaron Scott in regards to Michigan. Right. We're still in that post visit buzz period. Right they're still coming to Columbus. If they, if they can't, I tell you what, if either of them cancel their trip to Columbus next weekend, then be worried. If they still show up to Columbus next weekend, then all is good. Ohio state will have their chance to counter. Ohio state will have their chance to be like, yeah, Michigan's great, but, but that's it. That, that that's it just like always beware of that 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 post visit buzz you get all the stories you get all of the again these kids are in high school they're they get on the phone with an with an interviewer they're super eager to please then they're talking to an ohio state recruiter about an ohio state trip that they legitimately had a ton of fun at and then they want to go and they want to tell the reporter what they think the reporter wants to hear which is that Ohio State's great and he loves Ohio State and hey, he might end up at Ohio State. They're high school kids and they aren't good at thinking past the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So they're 
buzzing off of what they just experienced, which is totally fair when you have a brain that's not done baking yet, which is how you describe a high schooler. <laughs> All right, and safeties, Jared mentioned, mentioned Jalen McLean, and um, you have on here a Peyton Woodard. Woodard, Woodard, Woodard. Um, I am never done baking, Gangland. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to say that in Ohio without a card. Uh, <laughs> safeties as kyle said jalen mcclellan is uh in the class as of very recently um i have two options here at safety i i think i think there there are two options at safety there's peyton woodward and there's kj bolden um kyle are you having internet issues buddy uh, can you hear me? I can. Your 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 go. video is breaking up a bit. Yep, that's my bad. Yeah, you're lagging a bit. You're still lagging a bit, but that's okay. As long as your voice is coming through, okay, we'll be fine. Can you turn them into corners? I would say no. I mean, I mean, yes, if you really had to, but it's more likely to go the other way around. The way Ohio State's doing things, it's more likely that you, especially with the cover safety position, it's more likely that you take one of your corners and make them a cover safety. Um, but yeah, I think when it comes to safety, there's Peyton Woodward and there's KJ Bolden. Okay. Um, th those are the two guys I have as far as Ohio State. Um, can we just have an all safety secondary with that fix things? No, it would not. It absolutely, um, would not, uh, especially if you ever want to run a, a man to man defense. Um, yeah, the Peyton Woodward, um, hold on real quick. Uh, Kyle, you can't, you're having issues. Oh, when did this happen? Oh, that's right. I knew that already. Um, hold on real quick for me. Minor issues. There you go. All right. Pey Peyton Woodyard. Um, should be noted. Uh, currently committed to, to Georgia. Acknowledged. Acknowledged, currently committed to Georgia. But. You also have KJ Bolden out there who is. I want to say. Uh, heavily favored to go to Georgia. Uh, he's got the crystal balls right now, KJ Bolden. And I'll also say this. I don't expect these two guys to be on the same team when it's all said and done. Um, does that mean that Peyton Woodyard decommits and comes to Ohio State and KJ Bolden ends up at Georgia? Maybe. Does that mean KJ Bolden comes to Ohio State? And Peyton Woodyard stays in, in, in Georgia. He, you know, reaffirms his commitment to Georgia. Yes, that is, that is also a possibility. Um, in my mind, despite the fact that Peyton Woodyard is currently committed to Georgia, I still feel like it is more likely at this time that he's the one that ends up at Ohio State and KJ Bolden ends up at Georgia. Um, am I confident in saying that? No. I, I mean, I'll just, I'm just going to be honest with you. No, I just feel like if I have to pick one, which I do, mm -hmm. that's what we're doing here today. Yep. If I have to pick one, 
Woodyard feels more likely to me. But Got I'm it. like, I'm like 55, 45 on it. Just, just so we're clear. Yeah, I'm like 55, I, 45 on it. I don't feel, I don't feel as confident with, um, with Woodyard as, as you do, Jared, just because he has, he has some of the other big guns coming, coming after him right now. I know you mentioned that he's visited George or he's committed to committed Georgia. To Georgia. Visited Georgia earlier, visited USC just this last week in Ohio State. He's got Alabama coming up next weekend. USC and Alabama coming up hard here. Yeah. It's man, I I don't feel as conf- confident as you do, but I mean I feel better about Ohio State's chances after this weekend from reports coming in. But as far as that high a percentage, I'm not quite there yet, though. I'm not. Don't don't get me wrong. I, when I say 45, when I say 55, 45, I'm talking specifically between Bolden and Woodyard. OK, I, I mean, those are the two guys I'm considering right now. And if I yeah. in, in my decision to pick between the two of them. I'm not saying there's like a 55 percent chance overall that Woodyard ends up in the class. That's not okay. what I'm right. saying. Right. That's that's fair. Yes, I, I would say one of those one of the two, but not both. No, no, I, I do not believe. And this goes for Georgia as well, just so we're being super clear. I do not believe both of these guys end up on the same team. Period. I don't care if it's Ohio State. I don't care if it's Georgia. I don't care if it's USC. I don't see both of these guys on the same team. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if, if if we're looking for some alternative names at safety, who who are neither of these guys? Um, Jordan Johnson Rubel, uh, who plays for IMG Academy down in Florida. Um, Jacob Jude, uh, who is another Georgia safety out of Langston Hughes. Um, I think are two other guys who are possibilities to end up in this class. Um, Reggie Powers is out there. Um, I, but I'm again, I, I'm, 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 I think I'm going down for you know, like Woodyard Bolden, <laughs> you know, going down the list. I'm going down that list basically in confidence that they end up in the final class at Ohio state. Mm -hmm. Um, Reggie powers did commit to Michigan state. I've had Reggie powers in, in previous classes. Um, I am going to say this as nicely as possible. I, I, I just, I don't think he, I think Ohio state thinks Ohio state can do better in, 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 in that regard. Um, now, if they strike out on all four of the safeties I mentioned, again, in, in order, Woodyard, Bolden, uh, Johnson, Robel, and Jude. Again, that's that's basically my order for who gets that last safety spot. Uh, if they strike out on all four of those guys. Maybe they talk to Reggie Powers again. Maybe they have additional names that I I don't have at this time. Um, no shot they miss all four. I mean, I I would say low shot they miss on all four. I would say low shot that they miss on all four. Um, these are some of the best guys. These are some of the best guys. Um, so there's competition. That's it. There, there's competition. So I've mentioned, Jared, that, uh, well, this, this last weekend was a lot, lot, of bi- lot of big names here. A lot of them that we mentioned, um, just mentioned here. Um, but for next weekend, another big, another big class, uh, another, another um, big time recruits coming in here. Some of the names that you've heard of before, like West and, and Aaron Scott and uh, Kingston, um, Peyton Pierce is making his trip from Texas up to do another visit to Ohio State, um, already committed to Ohio State. Um, mentioned um, Rudolph as well, um, Witten and um, Miles Lockhart. And then the other one here to kind of keep an eye out for, and I, 
we'll see, but I don't think anything is um, caught traction yet. But uh, big time commit uh, Justin Scott um, out of uh, St. Ignatius in Chicago. Not to be confused with uh, <laughs> with uh, Cincinnati here, but um, Justin Scott, um, one of one of the top uh, defensive linemen in the country coming to Ohio State this weekend. And again, maybe that's the missing guy at defensive tackle um, that that I've been looking for. Um, it, it, it feels like a tough get for Ohio State at this time, but you, you get him on campus, you do the pitch, and then you find out. As I think most people in the Ohio State world are saying right now, we all feel a lot better about K.J. Bolden this week versus last week. So maybe with Justin Scott, it's something similar. You hope. Um, but again, you look at those other guys visiting next weekend that, that Kyle mentioned. Bryce West, Aaron Scott, um, Kingston, Villamuesa. Uh, I did better on that earlier. Uh, Peyton Pierce already in the class. Elias Rudolph, Demarion Witten, Miles Lockhart. Um, Justin Scott, I just don't know. I just don't know at this time. It, I... We'll see. We'll see what happens at the visit. Yep. Uh, West and Scott, you got to lock these guys in after some nice Michigan visits. Maybe they're leaning away. Maybe you bring them back into the fold. Um, Kingston, again, someone who I have in the class, but maybe this weekend is what's needed to to lock in. Peyton Pierce already in the class. Miriam Witten, I believe, um, is if is when not if. As far as coming to Ohio State, Miles Lockhart, again, maybe you can close that gate. Maybe you can, you know, you you have Scott, West, and Lockhart all coming in on the same class. Yep. You get those three guys together, you start telling them, hey, what if we got all three of you here in the same building? Um, Elias Rudolph, I think, was like a early guy that was like in Ohio State's crosshairs. I there's a lot of buzz sending him to Michigan right now. And if, and if I'm being just I'm being real with you guys, Ohio state would rather have Houston and Lightfoot. That's just me being real. Um, that's not me. I'm not trying to be rude here. I think Rudolph has a uh, excellent college football future. I'm just saying, I think uh, Lightfoot and Houston are considerably more likely to come to Ohio State um, and that that's everyone would rather have Houston. I know I'm just I'm trying to be nice here. That's all I'm trying to be nice here. Um, again, I, I think I think Rudolph, who's a Cincinnati kid, um, has an amazing college football future. Just. But this time, I think Ohio State would rather have and are also more likely to get Lightfoot in Houston. All right. Anything else, Jared, with the with the class here or Let's any other talk any other names? No, no, I'm I'm kidding. We're not talking kickers. We are will, however, be spending the next twenty minutes talking about punters from Australia. Um, <laughs> we're not doing that either. Um, any questions down in the in the live chat? Maybe uh, I'll let everyone know that we have a. We have a Patreon page. We'd really like to get those numbers up. I think we're at like 19 or 20 members right now. We'd we'd love to get that up to like 25. And it, you can join that for as little as $3 a month. And you can pay for 12 months up front and it, you get like a 12% discount. So it takes it down to like $32 for the entire year. And I can tell you about early access episodes and live listen-ins and premium discord access. I can tell you about all that stuff and all of that's there. I can tell you about getting uh, ad free listening. You don't get any of the like Spreak, uh, Spreaker, which is our podcast service. You don't get any of those like mid rolls and pre rolls that you have. Like none of those are there. You'll get your own exclusive RSS feed. There are benefits. It's not a pure donation. But also it's it's three dollars a month to help keep this going. So even if none of those benefits mean anything to you, um, if we get like five or six people at just the three or three dollar a month tier. 
And then we can sort of build on that momentum. That would be huge for us. That'd be absolutely huge for us. So even if none of those benefits mean anything to you, um, maybe just come hang out in the discord server, toss us $3 a month and, and call it a day. Uh, this, and by the way, the discord server is free. There's a premium section of it, but it is, um, uh, almost entirely free. So, uh, discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, and it's also patreon.thesloopcast.com. Again, you, you, it would be, uh, greatly appreciated on our end. If we could, like I said, get those numbers up over at the Patreon a bit. All of it. You can find at thesloopcast.com. Yeah. You can find links to everything just by going to thesloopcast.com. Hey, Jerry, I got a question for you. Is this Kyle's Corner? No. Okay. So talking about recruiting here, does, does this sound like a bad idea? You have a 2025 quarterback reclassifying, not for 2024, but for the 2023 class. On the surface, that sounds horrible. Um. And I know no, I know nothing about this kid, and I don't want to speculate about anything in regards to this kid. Um, I know he's seventeen. Yes, yes. So he's like a senior. <laughs> he, yeah, wise. he's. It feels weird on the surface for sure. Um, I again, I don't know anything about his past. Uh, I don't know. I'm so I don't I don't want to speculate as to why he's 17 and and would have been the class of 2025 in the year 2023. But I don't know anything about him. I'm not going to speculate anything about him. But he is 17 years old. Um. So it it doesn't feel as crazy if you if you acknowledge that he's 17 then just saying he reclassified from 2025 to 2023 mm -hmm. i'm trying i'm trying to i'm trying to say this as gently as possible just to say that he uh is f somewhat old to be the class of 2025 at at this point in time, I'm, yeah. try, I'm, tr I'm really trying to be nice here, Kyle. Um, but he is 17 years old, so it doesn't. He is. Yeah, I mean, it, de definitely. You hear reclassify from 2025 to 2023 and it feels psychotic off the top. And I'm still not even saying it's a good idea. But I am saying he is 17. Yeah. Yeah, gangland. I I still can't get over the fact that it says it has a GPA of five point three four. I've I've never understood that. I mean, I understand that there's um, weighted and all that. I've I grew up at four point oh was the highest that you could get back in my day. Kyle's back in my get, day, Kyle's yeah, yeah. Get he he took a lot man. of AP in college courses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weighted, so. I mean, again, I don't know what the situation is because obviously he's not stupid with a 5.4 GPA. He is obviously very like he's something is going correct academically for him at this point. So, again, you would think a class of 2025 kid right now, you'd assume what did he be 15 but he's not he's 17 maybe maybe you think he's 16 but he's actually 17 i i don't know and i don't want to speculate all, all all i saw was 2025 kid is reclassifying to 2023 which felt sec psychotic and then i heard well he's 17 though so it makes it feel less psychotic and that's really as far as I, I, at that point, I just saw the tweet, which said he has like a 5.4 GPA. I there's I don't know what happened there. And quite frankly, it's none of my business. And again, yeah. I'm not even saying the reclassification is a good idea. Because I don't know. But it just it just doesn't. There's 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 more to this story 
and I don't want to speculate too hard. Yeah, yeah. Some APs are, and if, oh, he, uh, which makes more impressive unless they're just feeding him the answer. Some APs are, and if he took the highest rated classes on rate my professor. Yeah. Listen, I'll, I'll, I, if he wants to publicize details, I will, I will see it. I'm not going to dig for the details on the academic standing of a, of a high schooler. And I'm just yeah, not yeah. going to do that. And now we're going to try to still save. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not scrutinizing. I'm not saying you are gangland. No, you're, you're adding, you're adding, um, you're adding information to the story that is your information and not his information. Like you're, you're adding your own commentary from your experience into it. That's, that's perfectly fine. How about the Ohio state athletics, Jared? Ohio state athletics in general, in general. Yeah. Ohio Did we, state. Kyle, I want to, I want to, didn't we talk about the, directors presidents whatever cup it is last week no i don't think i don't think we did guys no, no. I, don't, I don't think we did no. was that just was that just a was that just a like personal conversation you and i had it was yeah okay <laughs> ohio state ohio state finished uh third in the director's cup here uh behind the director's cup behind um Texas and Stanford, it was. Yeah. So, yeah, overall, it was a very, very successful uh, collegiate year for Ohio State Athletics. Which so here's the conversation it... that I'm remembering. I'm remembering you talking about the swim team winning again. Or excuse me, the synchronized swim team winning again. We started talking about national championships. We started making yeah, fun that, of the fact that, that Michigan has no national, uh, like almost no national championships in the, in this millennia. Was that a personal conversation? We had that conversation last one, but not about the director's cup. We just talked about I think total national titles, but I, I think, I think the director's cup came into it. You know what though? It's fine. Cause now it's the final rankings and I'm going to shut up. Yeah. So yeah, Ohio state finishing third, but you can look at it this way. Ohio state, Ohio uh, State was in first after the a winter, after the winter uh, sports. So you can look at it as the well the the spring teams didn't do as well as <laughs> as we would want them to to maintain that number one spot. But hey, hey, third third's pretty good. Third is very very good. We just need another team to be carrying the weight instead of everything falling on the back of the synchronized swimming team. And, yeah. and, and the women's pistol and the men's pistol, but especially the women's pistol. Um, who, who else are the, like the bell cows at Ohio state? I feel, I feel like that's, I think it's like the, the pistol teams and the synchronized swimming team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, I think yeah. are like the dominant rowing. I know that used to be true. Is that still Te true? Tennis has been, I know, I know. Tennis, yeah. They have women's like, rowing, but also if you remember like, the Sloopcast kind of, at least on Twitter, kind of scooped the story about some negative happenings there. And then eventually the uh, it's li literally the one thing we ever got close on as far as actually scooping a story was something about some. It was like some mishappenings on the Ohio State women's rowing team in regards to the coach. And then the coach ended up getting fired a few months later. Just tossing that out there, uh, literally the shining moment as far as uh, big boy media and the Sloopcast. <laughs> I mean, the men's tennis did very well too, making it to the to the uh, NCAA championship game or match. So I thought, I thought that was a, um, well, that was a big plus for the spring spring athletics. I was about to propose a Ryder Cup style event for Olympic sports when the Directors Cup top four 
plays against Europe's best, then I just reinvented the Olympics. You didn't just reinvent the Olympics because you're basing it off of like, so like a lot of the athletes are are from like Europe or Asia or South America. Like whenever you like, anytime the Olympics roll around and we're like, Ohio state has this many athletes in the Olympics this year. And we're like, Oh, fantastic. And we look to see who they are. And like, none of them are Americans. <laughs> like that's, I feel like that's always the experience. It's basically the Olympics, but restricted to college athletes. Um, and we only let America and Europe compete like I intended. Who, okay, that's a loaded Esquire. That is a loaded sentence. <laughs> I know you didn't mean it that way, but wow. <laughs> Sarcasm. I know, I know, Esquire. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Parody, I know. I know. Fair use. I don't think I don't think I don't think that one's fair use. I know you're the lawyer here, but I don't think that's fair use. Buzzwords. There you go. That that'll get you out. That 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 one will get you out. That's right, I think a that's a Jared, tweet for sure. I, yeah, I think that's it. We've we've reached we've reached the hour mark here, Jared. So I think I think I think we should wrap it up here. Let's yeah, see. no, I think we should wrap it up on multiple accounts. Um, <laughs> uh, this has been the last episode of the Sleepcast. No, I'm obviously kidding. Um, boy, uh, my mind's now. I, I think I broke it. Uh, burn the tapes. No, we need to. Re we can't miss on another Monday. We will be releasing this episode. We missed last Monday. We won't be. We won't be missing this Monday. Yeah. Um, tonight's ending music are the Raging Nathans, the Raging Nathans who are from Cincinnati, if not Cincinnati, Dayton, if not Dayton, Cincinnati, I think pretty sure. So uh, they will be ending today's episode. The song will be called Wide Awake. Uh, that is our that is our song Um choice for today if you're watching this on youtube you have to go to the show notes and click the link to hear the song because youtube and copyright and stuff if you're listening to the podcast version of this uh you can just not do anything for the next what well, their punk band so for probably like the next two minutes and you'll <laughs> and you'll hear the song so with all that being said i'd like to uh encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again these are the raging nathans mm -hmm.